What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina. I got another kind of a salvage video for you today. I'm gonna take you on a journey with us. If you look off over here <clears throat> behind these docks here, we this was our old training area. We had a lot of things sunk, a couple boats, satellite dishes, stuff like that. And the problem with this area is it's really silty. So the visibility, we're lucky if we only have about two foot visibility on a good day. The other issue we've got is this is the side of our marina where we got our gas slip. So anytime we had students out here in the water doing skills, we had boats coming in and out. And even with a dive flag, those boats were allowed to come in to the gas dock, so it was kind of dangerous for the students. But if you come with me here, our new training area is right out here. And if you can kind of see way off in the distance, you'll see a big old orange ball out there. That big old orange ball is actually one of our new training platforms that we actually moved. And we've got some other items that we've already moved around as well. Well, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go out here and we're going to get one of these satellite dishes that sunk. And we're going to raise it up to the top. We'll either swim it across or just grab a boat, one of our tow boats, and we'll pull it on across. And then we're going to find a location to put it, drop it down, and then run a line to it from one of our platforms. This just gives our students something else to see, or if you're here in our area and you want to come to what we call the training grounds or playing grounds here, it'll give you something else to see. But a lot of you guys also have asked, how do we rig stuff? How do we do salvage work? And if you'll come back over here, I want to show you one of our lift bag systems that we use and how we do it. And so we're really big fans of the sub salve usa systems or the sub salve bags and this is one of our 1000 pound lifts which will be plenty for what we're going to do and i just want to show you how i got it rigged here um basically i've got it rolled up just so that me and the other diver can carry it with us this morning i've just got bungees holding it together so all we've got to do is simply unbungee it and unroll the bag and of course we are going to hook it up i've just got a little bit of rope here tied to it so i can hook it up to the satellite dish and then once I open it, the satellite dish will be connected on this side. This side over here is where I've got a 80 cylinder, an 80 cubic foot cylinder. And I've just got it bolt snapped to the top of the bag here. And of course, we just got a low pressure line that goes straight in. And then I can manipulate it by simply turning the, the tank on and off. And that will actually fill the bag up. So that's kind of how we do the salvage works, kind of how we rig stuff. We've got a ton of these bags that we use for heavy salvage, stuff like that. But for what we're lifting today, I don't want to use the small 50 pound or 100 pound bags. I want something that's going to lift it, take it straight up to the surface for me. We're only working in about 30 foot of water. And I'm actually going to commentate this video for you. So while we're under there, you're going to see and hear everything that I'm doing. And I'll kind of explain exactly what it is we're doing. We've got some rope that's already attached to the satellite system to help us get out to it or to locate it. So we're going to have to get that rope up. We don't want to leave that in water. But I want you to come along with us. I hope you learned something from this video. If you got any questions during my outro of the video, please put uh, some questions down there and I'll try to answer it as well. But guys, come along with us today and we'll see how good we do. All right, here we are at the beginning of the dive and I've got my bag ready. I'm just making some last minute adjustments to make it a little bit easier to swim with. Make my descent. Here you'll see our guideline here. Um, this was one of the original guidelines that we used or navigational lines to get out to the satellite dish to begin with. And we've actually got three satellite dishes um, that were here. One was actually already here in the water. The other two we put there. But we're going to go out and get the largest one um, on this particular dive and get it moved today. And I'm just following the line out. And you can kind of tell there, the visibility ain't too bad. We probably got about 5 to 10 foot of vis. But once we get down to a depth of about 15 feet, it really starts getting dark. And you'll notice there's a lot of rock and sand here, but you'll notice the bottom just kind of changes to pure silt. So um, not a great ideal place for new divers uh, necessarily to come out and train. Um, even with good buoyancy, there's going to be that chance that they're going to stir up the bottom. Uh, it's another reason we moved our platforms is simply because platform collected so much silt that you know if they kneeled down on it or whatnot uh, or one little fin kick would just black it out and here we're starting to get into more of the silty area you'll see um, both my hand movements and from carrying the bag with me that um, it starts to get silted up and blacked out um, but we're headed on down we're probably in about 15 foot of water now we're about halfway down we've got another 15 feet to go uh, but as we get over to where the actual satellite dish is, that you can just see it's just pure black to us. Um, another reason it's so dark is that the general area where we're at now, it's in a cove. 
uh, which you saw at the beginning of the video and it doesn't get much sunlight compared to where we're actually going to put this satellite dish and we're actually going to move everything out there as well um, here i'm probably about 20 25 foot so i got about another five feet to go but as i come up to the satellite dish you'll see it's just pretty pretty dark um, without a flashlight you're really not going to see much so you can imagine bringing open water students through here uh, during the tour portion of their dive is just not so it wasn't pleasurable for them and if you had more than one or two students it was very very difficult to keep up with them so thus another reason that we wanted to move the uh, move this satellite dish and the rest of the uh, items that we've got sunk there as well but here I've got the satellite dish um, and it's kind of oriented to where the dish part with the um, transceiver or the receiver unit is kind of pointing downwards so you can't really tell what it is much but the pole that it mounted on that mounted into the ground is kind of sticking up here uh, and all I'm doing now is just kind of trying to figure out a good place to hook the bag to it um, and that way I know where to put the anchor shackle of the bag itself uh, and I decided I was fixing to just tie the anchor shackle up here and then I noticed there's a little bar right there and I'm not sure if you can see it but about where my left hand is right where the flashlight was there there's a little bar um, and so as I go to tie here I realize hey there's a bar right there right where my right hand is and I figured you know what better place to put the anchor shackle so I'm actually getting rid of the line there I'm going to take out the little bolt of the anchor shackle itself and I'm going to go ahead and mount it to it uh, and instead of opening up the bag and getting it position I'm going to go ahead and mount the bag first uh, that way I'm not going to lose it when I go to open it up. It's not going to be an entanglement hazard. It's not going to get in my way. Um, the line, and I'll talk a little bit about this too, the line that we used, the guideline or the navigation line to get down to it, our initial thought was we're going to come back about 10, 15 feet, cut the line. That way as we um, manipulate the lift bag itself and take it to the surface, uh, we, we should be able to control it. And if we did 10 to 15 feet, that gives us about 15 foot of play as we come up off the bottom with it we could be about 10 15 feet away however uh, at the last minute I decided to actually leave the line connected to the dock where we started the dive at and that way as it comes up um, the satellite dish itself will always be mounted onto uh, the system itself so I decided to leave it on there and that way we're not going to lose the satellite dish let's, let's say it was a heavy current as the satellite dish comes up to the surface it would always be connected to the dock we could simply swim over we could actually use that line to pull it in if we needed to but here I've got the uh, bag I'm starting to open up the bag now I do have it secured to the satellite dish once I get it opened up and get it positioned exactly where I want it um, I'll start manipulating the tank itself there you can kind of see how the tanks attached uh, uh, I really like these bags because of the ring systems that's on it. Uh, you can just use a standard stage bottling kit. This is actually one of my side mount cylinders. So I've already got you know one bolt snap on it and all I did was just tied a, a little um, a little rope or a little string around the valve and put another bolt snap on it or a little double ender and so I was able to clip off to both of the rings of the bag, roll the tank up in the bag and I didn't have to deal with multiple things. It's just one unit. It makes it very easy to deal with. Um, here I'm hooking up the low pressure line there um, in which typically you could have already had it hooked up. The problem is I wouldn't be able to roll up the bag but there I'm checking with my dive buddy make sure he's okay. Uh, here of course I'm telling him to, to stay off the satellite dish anytime you lift objects especially a heavy object like this or a large size object you never want to be on top of it as you're raising it because if it gets into a rapid ascent then you're going to go up into a rapid ascent so we're making sure that we're staying just off the side of it we do have our hands on it so that we can control it um, and of course we're using the line that navigation or that guideline from the dock to control it as well but we don't want to be directly on top of it because it can cause problems uh, if it happens to get into a rapid ascent. So all I'm doing now is just manipulating. I'm filling up the bag with uh, air out of the tank and I'm trying to watch it. I, I don't want to fill up too much and just watch this thing just rush to the surface. I do want to try to control it the best I can. So all I'm doing is just kind of giving it a little tug. He, plus my die buddy there, he's giving it a little tug on the side. Just until we feel it break free from the bottom, then I'll shut the... Uh, air off 
off going to the back. I don't need no more air than that. Um, we're not going to lose the satellite dish in any way because we do have it tied to the line, to that nav line or that guideline there. And all I'm doing is just trying to break it free from the bottom. And then, of course, we're just going to let boils of all, law work for us. As it goes up, the bag will expand on out. And there you can kind of see the line there. And we just kind of use it as a guideline to control it. I don't have to worry about the bag overinflating. I don't have to worry about dumping air out of it. Uh, there you can see that 15-foot mark that I was telling you about. It's kind of how far away we want to be with it. But then, of course, we let it go on up to the surface. And then we'll go up, verify that everything's still good, make sure it's floating on its own. And, of course, we'll swim it back over to land. But as we come up here, you'll see that we have made it to the surface and all is well with the satellite dish and of course i'm gonna wait until um until my dive buddy comes up as well before i start swimming it over but that's that extra little piece of rope there i was going to use to tie it up need be but there, there's the satellite dish as you can see it's floating and of course as my buddy comes up i'll check on him and then kind of go from there decided to leave that rope on at the last minute as our guide rope well, no, I was thinking, ain't they two ropes on it? No, I cut the other one off because it used to be a rope that went over there to the other okay. platform. I didn't know if there was one that went to that platform. We can use this guide rope now to help pull it around. Yeah, no crap. Now we just got to get it swim to the buoy. All right, guys, so we just got finished up. As you can see out here behind me, this is our new training area. We kind of or started using it versus this other side about two years ago. And each of those little buoys, we've got certain things marked. We ended up doing more today than we actually had planned on doing. Um, however, my camera died, so you, you guys didn't actually get to see everything. But like I said, I'm going to commentate through the uh, lifting of that satellite dish and, of course, bringing it over or what was on camera. I'll commentate that for you. But once we get everything moved where we want it and we get the ropes ran, uh, I'll actually go out and make a tour dive for you and explain what everything is, how we run navigation for our students and stuff like that. But this is our new training area out here. You can kind of see where stuff's placed. And there's a couple reasons that we did this. There's a long point, which y'all seen in a previous video of ours, when Duke Pyre dropped all the water and we actually walked out on the point. You kind of saw that. Well, the right side of this, there's a shelf, about 20 to 25 foot shelf, and it's just solid flat all the way across. Now, once you get to the end of that shelf, of course, it drops straight off into the, the abyss of the lake, if you will. But this is our new training area here. It's great. We've got about five to 10 foot vis today. So since boating season's over, as the water starts clearing up, our students should be able to see everything good and clear. And we already have ropes ran to pretty much everything you see out there. Um, we've just got to go out and mark it with, um, we're going to use plastic slates to kind of mark it to give them navigational headings so when they're down there, they can set up their compass. If they don't want to follow the line, they can follow the compass to each item. But guys, I appreciate you coming along with me. If you got any questions, please put it down in the comment section below and I'll try to answer it the best I can. Guys, if you like this video, smash the like button for me and definitely share it. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recover videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.